2023 was great. We launched this channel and took you around the world searching for inspiration in gastronomy. Over 180,000 of you subscribed and you watched our videos more than 14 million times. For that, a huge thank you. I'm so happy you liked it. Today, we are serving up something different. I visited more than 70 three Michelin star restaurants. And now, at the end of the year, I'm going to pick my favorite places. How do I decide which of these will make the top 10? It's a lot more than nice wine and fancy food, at least for me. Of course, these things matter, along with the plates, the decor, the service and the atmosphere. But in any three Michelin star restaurant, you can bet all those things are going to be amazing. For me, what makes a restaurant really great is what you can't see. It's the energy, the connection, the originality, the characters. These are the things you can measure. It's the human side. You just feel it or you don't. In the end, I was able to choose 10 restaurants that I'd like to visit again and again. Ranking them was another story, because each one inspired me for different reasons. So I present to you, in no particular order, my top 10 favorite restaurants of the year. Buri. This place is outstanding. A beautiful family business, where Chef Tim, his brother Ben and Tim's wife Inga leads a smartly dressed service team where nothing is overlooked. Their 1950s villa with a gorgeous garden is like an oasis in the countryside. A perfect example of Belgian beauty. Our meal was bursting with creativity and delicate flavors, plated with surgical precision. The wine pairings, created by Sommelier and Matteo, were spot on. I know it is a cliche thing to say, but when you do something with heart, it shows up in the results. Here, they pour their hearts into everything. Buri is full of passion and joy, with people who are strongly dedicated to their profession. In my humble opinion, this Belgian pearl goes beyond three stars. Coming up next, restaurant experience that took all the metrics and cranked them up to 11. I'm talking about Plenitude, the one inside the brand new Chavard Blanc Hotel Paris. This place is a great destination if you like an elegant, sophisticated environment with amazing dishes that lead you along with the creative concept of unique sauces on the highest levels of French cuisine and the French delicacy. And it's all brought to you by two mega-talented chefs, Arno Dunkel and Maxim Frederick. I remember when we sat at the chef's table and how passionate chef Arno was about the food. I enjoyed every single moment of it. A fabulous wine selection adds another dimension to the experience. How fabulous! There is a 50-year-old Bordeaux in the pairing. Come on! The wine cave, the cheese closet and the best bread of my life. All of it dropped into the heart of Paris. No surprise they got all three Michelin stars in just seven months. If you woke me up from a deep sleep and gave me one second to choose a restaurant, there is a really good chance you would hear me say plenitude. Lassiet Champanois. Few things I love more than champagne. So for me, going to Reims made me feel like a kid at Disneyland. Reims is the birthplace of bubbly. So you better believe the only three Michelin star restaurant in the region has a great selection. However, what really took me by surprise was not the stellar champagne list by the glass, the beautiful gardens, the charming atmosphere or the fancy menu holder. It was the freight train of flavors. It's really hard to remember every dish from every restaurant, for me at least. Of all the places I have been to this year, this is the one where my memory of the food is crystal clear. Best opening dish of all time. And many others with just as much power. I honestly love how the chef approaches the cooking. Unforgettable. The acidity, the textures, the aromatics, the sensations are all in the right place. My favorite champagnes were only supporting characters in this powerhouse performance. This is the place where I took my wife to celebrate our anniversary. A place to remember. A place to go back. Next is a place they created a league of their own with something they call Expedition Dining. Iris. I was so curious, I dropped everything to be one of the first to try it. It's a journey on fjord, stopping at an island to build excitement, and then the main event. It might bring back memories of the movie The Menu, but in reality, Iris is nothing like that or anything else. It's literally an eyeball floating in the middle of the sea. Chef Annika opened my taste buds with some of the best and the most interesting cuisine I've had. 
when you are invited for a little grill party on the terrace in the middle of the meal while enjoying the fresh Nordic air with an ice cold beer in your hand, that feeling is priceless, especially at a place like this. I would be surprised if this restaurant didn't reach great heights in the gastronomy world. Iris definitely deserves every attention it gets now. Let's go back to Piedmont for one of my absolute favorites, Piazza Duomo with the mastery of chef Enrico Crippa and his fantastic service team. The interior is the perfect backdrop for the roller coaster ride of flavor and texture. When I think about the stream of plates coming to the table, I still get excited. Salata 21, 31, 41, 51 will forever live rent-free in my head. Crippa is simply amazing with his Japanese-inspired style. Obviously, this environment can't really be homey. But this place isn't about that anyway. It's a gorgeous, elegant world, and your focus goes specifically on the food and the incredible bite glass wine offers. The service is top-notch as well. Real gentlemen, immaculate, professional work, and the amount of grace that goes into every of their movements is simply beautiful. In three hours, Chef Clippa and Piazza Dumo raise the bar and put on a show. In my opinion, the best you will find in Italy and one of the best of this channel. We have reached the halfway point on the top 10 list. It's easy to describe this one, we can do it in just one word. Crazy. A 50 course, seven hour whirlwind experience like nothing else. The one and only Alchemist. You couldn't see the video about it yet, but stay tuned, it's coming up in January. Now is the perfect time to subscribe, so you won't miss a thing. What can I highlight? The dome, the dance, the freedom room, the list goes on and on. And I haven't even gotten to the food yet. Chef Rasmus Munk's quest to evolve through research, but stay grounded in classic techniques gives us the best of both worlds. Combine this with an outstanding service team and the sommelier who went an extra mile with a nice gesture and we have found memories for life. No wonder this place says out faster than a Broadway musical. This is a must-have experience and definitely a top 10 for me. Diverso. Unmatched in many perspectives. It is really hard to do truly outstanding and unique things in the culinary world these days, but it looks like Diverso does it effortlessly. This is a form breaker restaurant in many ways, starting with the crazy interior and finishing with the mind blowing food. It's like an insane professor took over the kitchen. Like a punk who said, I don't care, I'm going to do it my way. And Steph just follows him. Everybody's chill, cheerful, but professional at the same time. The waving pigs and marching ants may take away some seriousness, but trust me, it all goes into the quality and flavors, because these are things they don't joke about. Chef Davis's unique menu was mind-blowing in creativity and mouth-watering in taste. Sommelier Miguel Angel Milan won the World's Best Sommelier Award in 2023 at the 50 Best Restaurants Awards, and I can clearly see why. He's so enthusiastic and passionate about the wines. He's taking you on a joyride. And that's exactly what the Diverso experience feels like. A joyride. Diverso is not a yes in my top 10. It's a hey yes. Next up is a restaurant where the guest is God. Indian fine dining in the luxury of Dubai. It is called Tresin Studio. I've been here twice already and I have already signed up for my third trip. Chef Saini takes you on a 17-course tour of the Indian subcontinent, at each stop serving up creative twists on the food from each region. Using modern techniques and the best ingredients, some of which grow in the rooftop garden, the 20-seat restaurant has a confident but humble staff who are ultra-professional in their approach to service. The cultural journey, the magical flavors, the harvest celebration, the really fabulous drink pairing earns it a place on the list. Ampar Alexandre Mazia. Next, the restaurant that is near and dear to my heart. It was the very first restaurant we showcased on this channel, and it made a huge impact on me. The atmosphere is cozy, with an open kitchen and rustic design. The menu is fantastic. The two-hour meal saw over 20 plates come across the table. Each one told part of a story, like a poem with every dish rhyming with the next. Here, we don't find traditional luxury dining. There is no gold leaf, crystal chandeliers or limoji tableware to speak of. Instead, we have all natural elements, handmade with pride. And this was one of the secret elements of Amper Alexander Mazia. 
the human side. When you meet someone like the chef, the sommelier, the head waiter, with interesting characters that breathe life into the experience. I had a really nice time in Singapore and Stockholm, and two restaurants played a huge role in it, Franzen and Zan. The two places are very similar in many ways, since they both belong under Björn Franzen's wings, so I'm going to talk about these two as one. Arriving here instantly felt that this was going to be something else, and it was, as I see, this might be the future of fine dining. The Twin Towers of the Zans broke tight with the old-timer aristocratic tightness, and introduced me to a more light, chill and uplifting experience in dining. We have been moving from floor to floor, from the living room to the dining room and to the balcony. The waiters were squatting near the tables and the chefs sometimes sat with the guests. It was almost like coming to someone's home for a solid party, where Guns N' Roses and The Cure painted the vibe of the night. And all this didn't take anything from the professionalism and the quality of the food or the service. I remember how I was laughing with the lady of the house at Singapore, how chill and cheerful was the team, and of course, how amazing the food was. The Asian and Nordic mentality is close to my heart. They have pretty much common virtues, which I admire. So the marriage of these two is unsurprisingly a big joy for me. Sometimes stars don't reflect the true quality that lies in a restaurant. And sometimes 10 is a too low number for everything I want to highlight. So I'm going to talk a bit more. Sorry. What it's like when you have a true, genuine cause which you are devoted to. The first to answer this is Central in Peru. This restaurant is not so much a restaurant as it is an institution. It's a church. It's unique, genuine, and so much more than the world's best restaurant. Spending time with Chef Virgilio was like a spiritual cleanse. His team's commitment to preserving Peruvian culture and tradition is moving. It feels amazing to just be next to these passionate, talented people who have devoted themselves to their cause. The menu explores the biodiversity of Peru and its vibrant history. Central and its sister restaurant Mill are unique, to say the least. This trip felt more like a culinary pilgrimage. It was inspiring and had a huge impact on me. A really special place and for a good reason. And it doesn't even need stars to be the best in the world. If I would like to quote one of the Michelin Guide's lines, it's worth a special journey. Leadership out of many virtues is the one I admire the most. And there is a place where I found leadership to be truly mesmerizing. It's the Tyan table. The last people I expected to see running a three Michelin star restaurant here were two guys from Germany. The executive chef Christian Stubb and the owner chef Stefan Stilla. A name I think about till this very day. His charisma, the calmness in the kitchen, the humidity is really catchy. And his virtues result in an amazing restaurant. He doesn't advertise himself, instead he talks about his team. He is proud of them and gives it a sound. He is a character I think I could learn from. Imagine how strong that kitchen is, where Christian Stoop is only the second strongest man. It was fascinating to talk to Chef Stiller in the company of a drink. And he is not the boss, he is the leader. And his mantra? Innovation before perfection. The menu was creative, delicious and fun, with European techniques using the best ingredients from all over the world. To keep it really fresh, he changes it every six weeks. It was outstanding and it didn't want to meet with the local taste. Question everything and think outside the box. The two most important phrases for a place, which truly deserves my mention. The fat duck. It meant a lot to me because I got to share it with my daughter. And it was perfect. It's a fairy tale experience with storytellers instead of servers. It's a masterclass in creativity, with cleverness infused into everything that brings wonder and joy to all. From the nitro poach aperitif to the sound of the sea, it's an incredible interplay of flavor and fantasy that will make you feel like this is Wonderland. And you were all Alice. For 20 years, the Fat Duck has been one of the most important stations in the world of fine dining. For me, it's more like a museum now. The museum of creativity. The curiosity that needs to be shared to be understood. And now with my daughter, we have memories 
for life. And that does it for my top 10 and beyond video. What is your opinion? Put your top 10 in the comments below. Thank you again for a great year. We have visited many beautiful restaurants across four continents and made many friends and memories along the way. Stay tuned because we won't stop next year.